What's up guys, it's TechnoViking23 coming to, to you today with another Warframe video, another video in my Warframe 101 series. And today we're going to be doing something a lot of people have requested. We're going to be talking about whether or not you should join a syndicate, uh, whether you're a main player of the game or a free-to-play account or however you're playing through it. We're going to kind of talk about syndicates a little bit in general, talk about how they work and what they can do for you, the benefits that you can get from joining them, and also some of the penalties you'll see in the game uh, depending on your rank within the syndicate. So syndicates are pretty easy there in your ship once you get the nodule unlocked. I believe you have to be mastery rank 3 to actually join uh, a syndicate. But if you want to find out information about the syndicates, just go to that section of your ship and you can pull them up. Uh, you can also visit the syndicates on the relays and go to each individual one and visit them there. Uh, but as you can see here, we've got several to choose from. There are six all together. And there are different levels of reputation you will get with each syndicate. And you can see that four of mine are actually in the red and two are in the blue. I'm currently a member of Steel Meridian and also sort of Red Veil vale, uh, as I'm working on grinding out some of the reputation levels. Uh, now the way it works with the syndicate is you will pick which one you want to join. You will have to make an initial offering. And I can kind of show you. Uh, what that looks like. Let's let's say we wanted to join the Arbiters of Hexus, which right now is kind of hard because we're a fraud with them. They don't really like us too much. Uh, that's one thing I'll talk about in a minute is the relationships the different syndicates have. You can actually see it on the right side where it says the alignments. You're an enemy of you know Red Veils. Your enemy opposed to the parent sequence and allied with Cephalon Suda. I'll talk about how that works here in a minute. But each syndicate will have an initiation, and you can see here our first level would require 500 nanospores and 10,000 credits. That's really not too much to have to sacrifice to get into the syndicate and most of the syndicates are going to have fairly low uh, initial initiations. You can see here 100 Palmer bundles, 10,000 credits. Most of them are going to be pretty similar. As you rise up through the ranks, uh, I'm going to go over to Steel Meridian here because I'm almost to the top level uh, as a general, there are going to be a lot of different and more complicated sacrifices you have to make. Uh, my next title here, as you can see, is General. I actually, am, I've already reached the 99,000 threshold a few times, but I've spent syndicate points on, on some things in the store. Um, you can see I would have to get the Trinity Prime Neuroptics, and I'd have to give them 500,000 credits. So that is quite a hefty amount. And once you get up to the higher ranks of your syndicate, you're going to have to be able to give them much better stuff. Now, the other thing, too, is this is not just the Trinity Prime Neuroptics blueprint that I have to get to drop. I actually have to build it and then give it to them. So the amount of time that can take and the luck you need can be, eh, it can be kind of a, a hard time. Uh, you're relying on a lot of RNG. Uh, but if you want to be able to access some pretty good mods and get to the top level of your syndicate, that is what you're going to have to do. So it's just part of it. I'm just kind of letting you guys know that. It's one of the slightly negative drawbacks to being in a syndicate is you are going to have to grind a lot when you get out to the higher levels of it where you need some pretty uh, rare parts and things to uh, you know, advance to that final level. Uh, however, there are benefits to being in the syndicate that mostly outweigh the work you have to put into it. Uh, I'm gonna back up here, I'm gonna go into offerings, and we're gonna look at Steel Meridian here. Um, you know, This is gonna be all of the items you can actually get through your syndicate. Now, every time you get a syndicate level, uh, you will actually be offered one item for free. And you know what, actually to explain this a little better, I'm gonna go to a syndicate I haven't done anything with uh, because it'll be a little bit easier. So like if we look at uh, parent sequence, for example, we go to offerings. You can see here uh, each thing will tell you how much standing in the syndicate it requires and what level, like you need associate to get most of these early objects, um, executive to get some of the next, the next level here, senior executive, and then it continues to go partner, higher and higher and higher. So as you get higher up, you'll be able to access more of these items. And so that kind of shows you how you progress through. Now, every time you reach a new level, you do get, like I said, a gift. They'll offer you one item from each level uh, for free. And another cool thing about syndicates is you can buy void relic packs. So you will get one, uh, three random relics with a guaranteed rare. Uh, so this is these are also available in the market for platinum. So this is another object if you're not getting good relic drops through uh, Excavation missions or farming missions You can always come to your syndicate and spend some of your standing to buy a couple of relic packs to go get those prime parts. So 
that's pretty nice. And the way it works, the way you build the reputation is you actually will buy a symbol from your syndicate, uh, something like this, the sigil. Uh, you'll get a sigil from that syndicate, and over here it will tell you uh, this is how much of a bonus gain you will get to your syndicate reputation. So once you have that equipped, uh, you can equip that for any mission you want. You can see my sigil here on my back of my Valkyrie Prime. Uh, you will gain syndicate experience in that mission, and it will show you up to you on the mission completion screen when you're uh, done with it every time. And you get one of these, um, you know, when you level up, you can get them, and they actually will give you, for example, the Freedom Fire, it's one I think I have on right now, actually gives you 11%. So as you get up in the higher ranks, you can get sigils, uh, like, they give you a much higher bonus uh, to your syndicate points, which is pretty cool. So that's the way you basically will level up the syndicate. And if you want to change to another syndicate, you're able to do so. You just have to keep an eye out for how that will affect your relationship with your main syndicate and other syndicates in the game. But let's go over some of the stuff you can get. You can get uh, pets that will help you in missions. You can get more sigils. You can get the relic packs, as I mentioned before. You can get parts to build some Arcwing weapons uh, in your through your syndicate. And you can see what each one costs. They're not too expensive. Uh, getting syndicate reputation is not not really super hard. Uh, one of the good things is too is you can get these squad health restore, squad ammo restore, the larger blueprints. These come in handy for when you're you know if you're in a clan mission or if you're playing with a lot of your friends. These can come in handy. Now each syndicate is also going to have a unique set of weapon modifications, and these are for like for example the heck, uh, the dual cleavers, and the sobek is what Steel Meridian offers, which are mainly Grenier weapons which makes sense because Steel Meridian is run by sort of a Grenier deserter. Uh, I actually have the Sobek. It's one of my favorite guns in the game. And then I'm, I also have the Heck, which is one of the best weapons in the game. Uh, I don't have the dual cleavers, but all of these mods are worth getting if you have a good weapon that's featured in them. You get 200% multi-shot. Uh, in this case, you get 20% status chance and plus one justice. Now, what the justice does is that's kind of a syndicate bonus proc that will go on your weapon. And once you fill up a little meter... Uh, it will cause an explosion that affects like everything in the room. It's pretty awesome. I, I don't remember, honestly, off the top of my head, I'd have to look it up and, and remember exactly what each syndicate's proc does. Some are like viral damage, some are blast damage. I want to say the heck is blast, or the, um, the Steel Meridian ones are blast damage because they knock everything down and do quite a bit of damage. But these uh, procs are going to create a really nice area of effect um, that's going to really help you out. And you can also pair that up with the Syndicate's specialized weapons, which will automatically have uh, the Syndicate proc on them. And when you're using a Syndicate weapon in your primary, secondary, and even in your melee slot, you can really dish out some awesome damage combos with that. So something to keep in mind, and if, like I said, if it's a weapon that you use quite a bit, uh, it's definitely worth looking at these. Now some of the Syndicates offer these for kind of crappy guns, so you don't want to really get them. Uh, but, like in my case, the Heck and the Sobek are two of the really solid shotguns in the game. So, uh, I definitely picked up Shattering Justice and Scattered Justice for those to help out a little bit. Uh, you can get sculptures to put in your ship. That's kind of, you know, it's just up to you. Um, kind of a cosmetic item. Now, the best part is when you reach the final rank with your Syndicate, you can get Warframe modifications and specialized Syndicate weapons. And that's something you want to look at before you jump into a Syndicate. Um... Each syndicate is going to offer different mods for different Warframes, so you can kind of go through here and look at what they all do. You can see here they have specialized one for Atlas, uh, for Ember, and you keep going down through the list, Excalibur, Excalibur, Frost, and every syndicate is going to be different. Each syndicate does not have mods for every Warframe, uh, so you may have to keep that in mind. You want to look at the syndicates that are going to offer the mods for the Warframe that you want to play. And this, if you're a free-to-play player, that's really important because you want to kind of focus on, uh, you know, two or three specific Warframes throughout the game because you don't want to be spending Platinum or, you know, trying to grind out all these other Warframes. So focus on which Warframe you want to pick, and then when you're looking at a Syndicate, go through their list and make sure uh, it's a Syndicate that offers some good mods for your specific Warframe. That'll help you out quite a bit later on. Uh, when you're going through the game, but that's pretty self-explanatory and you know You guys can go through the syndicates and you know You're available you're allowed to look at all of the items they have to offer before you join one so you can definitely go through and look and find the Ones that you would want to go for so I definitely suggest doing that doing a little bit of research before you go into um, You know join the syndicate Now we get down here at the bottom. We have some more items that are really really good uh, You can get a signed on which is kind of a cosmetic item 
and each clan is going to have one that's a little bit different. That actually looks pretty cool with my Valkyr and her other stuff flying around there, so might be something I'll look at later on when I get higher up in the Syndicate. But the main thing you want to look at here are the Syndicate weapons, and like I mentioned before, these are all going to come uh, with that proc built into them, and they're a little bit more powerful than some of the regular weapons you get in the game. This is the Vacor Merlock, one of the best secondary weapons in the game. You can look through and see the different statistics on the side there. But these Syndicate weapons are really, really impressive. you got the Vacor Heck, which has an 8-round magazine versus the, I think, 5-round magazine the normal Heck has. So that's pretty awesome. This is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. And uh, these do require Mastery Rank 12 before you can use the primary weapons. I, I believe the Mastery Rank is a little bit lower for the secondary. I want to say 8 or 10, maybe. Um, but you can also get the melee weapon here, too. Each blocked hit charges a radial blind. When fully charged, you will drop your block to unleash it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, these all have some really nice statistics on them, and they also get that as syndicate proc, which is really cool. So uh, definitely important. You can get some of the better weapons in the game through your syndicate. Uh, for example, the other syndicate that I'm a member of is Red Veil. Vale. And if we go through their offerings, let me go down to the bottom here. They have... The uh, Rakta Cernos, which is one of the best bow weapons in the game. This thing does a ton of damage. And I'm actually... I have the requirements finished to get to the highest level of Red Veil. Vale. Uh, once I can get to Exalted. Or actually, you know what? No, I don't. They changed it. That's really not cool. Uh, so before this, you only had to, you had to get the Ash Prime Helmet. Which I already had built, and I grinded for it forever, and I had it ready to go. So now... It looks like with the introduction of Oberon Prime, or just in general, they decided to change the Syndicate requirements. So now I have to get the Trinity Prime chassis. And that's kind of that's kind of crap. I don't like that at all. That doesn't make me very happy. <laughs> and kind of puts a damper on my mood today. But anyways, guys, that, uh, that's a look at some of the things the Syndicates can offer. Now, before we talked about the relationship between the different Syndicates, you can see here I have four Syndicates that are in the red and two in the blue. And the main reason, if you look at Steel Meridian, they are enemies with parent sequence and opposed to New Loka, but they're allied with Red Veil. So anytime I do a Syndicate mission with a Steel Meridian sigil equipped, I'm actually going to get bonus uh, Syndicate points with Red Veil, but I'm going to lose points with parent sequence and New Loka. And that's regardless of you know whether or not I'm, I'm doing a specific mission, I'm going to always have negative experience with them as long as I'm wearing a Steel Meridian sigil. Same thing for Arbiters of Hexus. Uh, their main enemy is Red Veil, so if I do any Red Veil missions, I get negative experience with Arbiters of Hexus. Uh, it's a little bit less repair and sequence. If you do something for repair and sequence, they're only opposed versus being an enemy, so the loss is not going to be as great. However, they're allied with Cephalon Suda, so that you actually gain experience with Cephalon Suda. So there's a way to do, uh, I believe if you do Arbiters of Hexus, um, which will rank up Cephalon Suda, and then also... There's one other syndicate in here. I'm trying to remember which one it is. Um, I'd have to look it up. There's a way you can actually run two syndicates at once that will level up four of them while the other two uh, go in the red. So that can give you, you know, you'll be able to access much more equipment and, and, and mods and things doing that. But uh, if you're a free-to-play player, you don't have a whole lot of time. That's not really something you're going to want to worry about. You're going to kind of want to focus on one syndicate that is going to benefit you the most, has the weapon you want the most, or has the Warframe mods you want the most. And you just want to focus on that, and also it's Allied Syndicate. And that's how, you know, to make, be more effective with your time, uh, you're going to want to go through and do that. And that's kind of the way, like I mentioned with the Warframe mods, when you're looking at joining a Syndicate, kind of get an idea of what your, like, in-game weapon is that you definitely want. Uh, one of the reasons I joined Steel Meridian, to be honest, is because they have two of the better guns in the game, the Vacor Merlock and the Vacor Heck. And so I definitely want to get those weapons. Those are, you know, the Vacor Heck is a powerhouse that just shreds things at higher levels. Uh, so that's something I kept in mind when I joined the Syndicate. And also Red Veil, vale, obviously, you can get the Rack of Cernos uh, through them. And then some of the other Syndicates have some pretty solid weapons as well. Uh, but those were the main weapons that I wanted to look at. Like the Cyanide Gamma Core is pretty good uh, as well. But you definitely want to do your research before you join a, a Syndicate. Um, but it's, I, I think it's definitely a benefit to you as a player to pick up and join a Syndicate. Now, one last thing I'll talk about here, and it kind of ties into the reputation system, is like Parent Sequence, for example, they're the enemy of uh, Steel Meridian here. So if you look down here, 
you can see, let's go to, actually we'll go over to parent sequence, which we are right off. So we're like at the bottom of the barrel with them. And you can see here it will say when you're liability, you're hunted by an Xmas MOA squad. You're hunted by an Xmas MOA platoon. Anytime you're running a mission, uh, even if you're teamed up with other people, this opposing syndicate can send a squad, death squad after you. They're usually right around level 30. So this can really hurt at the lower levels. It's not so much a problem when you have better, better items and gear. Um, but I've found in my personal experience, they always come at the worst thought. You know, most inter-opportune time. Like when I'm using a brand new Warframe at like level 1 and I am, I'm trying to mod up weapons that are like level 5. And, and I'll get this death squad that comes in I simply cannot do enough damage to them. Uh, they will hunt you through the level. They'll follow you around. You can run away from them and at a certain point in time, they'll stop following you. Uh, but it can be an annoyance. Definitely can be an annoyance. It's kind of like the stalker showing up when you're you know, trying to do an important mission and it kind of screws everything up. Um, but if you have high enough level weapons and things, it's not really something to worry about. If you're grouped up with other people, it's not something that's going to really set you back at all. Uh, it can just be a minor annoyance when you're playing um, through some of these missions. And they'll drop blueprints to allow you to build um, pets and things that you can have help you out in the mission. So uh, taking them down definitely helps and gets you a little bit of experience uh, for your weapons and things. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you join a syndicate, especially if you're a lower level Warframe, if you don't have a lot of really good weapons just yet. Um, you know, if, if they send one of these after you're using the Mark One Brat, and you're not going to have a really good time trying to fight back against them. So uh, that is pretty much uh, a short version. Uh, this video did go on a little bit longer than I thought it would, but just kind of a, a brief explanation of syndicates in Warframe and how they work uh, and how they can benefit you. And like I said, it's kind of like joining a clan, even if you're a solo player or you're not going to be on as much. Uh, you will definitely get a benefit even from the first couple levels of the Syndicate, uh, getting the sigils and getting some of the items. Even the Void Relic packs you can buy will help you out a lot if you're trying to grind for Prime parts. So I would definitely suggest giving a Syndicate a try. Like I said before, though, make sure you do your research ahead of time. Uh, and you, you can change your Syndicate whenever you want. It's just you don't want to get up to level, level 3 or 4 of a Syndicate and realize, oh crap, I spent all this time and I actually wanted something the other Syndicate has that I'm an enemy with and now i got to build all that reputation back up. So... Do a little bit of research ahead of time, find out the Warframe models you want to use, find out the weapons you want to go for, and a Syndicate will pay great benefits for you uh, throughout your playing experience in Warframe. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, obviously, if any of you Warframe veterans would like to add anything more uh, below in the comments, feel free to do so. Hopefully, this has covered most of the Syndicate basics that people had questions about, and of course, if you still have questions, feel free to ask them down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great day. And I will see you again next time.